ladies and gentlemen uh, again this is dr lewis welcome back to this channel and today i'm going to handle a good uh, video that will talk about homemade toothpastes and saliva so i'm going to handle saliva what are the components of saliva then talk about toothpastes so if you are doing or if you've been doing commercial toothpaste with the hope that it will uh, clear your breath so that you'll have a good or nice smelling uh, mouth breath and uh, you're hoping that that will come from that commercial toothpaste or rather it will clean your teeth and give you this perfectly white teeth and then after this video you'll have to think twice about it why because i'll explain everything about commercial toothpastes without mentioning brands because we all know what can happen if you start mentioning brands in our videos and some of this content uh, is a little exposing so we'll just mention commercial toothpastes what are the ingredients that are used in this commercial toothpaste and their effects on your health then we'll also recommend uh, homemade regimens that can be used to help you clean your teeth have good breath with no uh, film in the morning when you wake up now these have been uh, tested by several people so from experience i stopped using uh, these brands of commercial toothpastes long ago so personally i use salt and sometimes i use activated charcoal and believe me you're not every morning you wake up there is no bad breath in your mouth there's no that biofilm and it's it's a good feeling okay so maybe at the end of the video you might consider getting uh, into natural remedies rather than the synthetic remedies now i will not uh, go deeper into this topic without even mentioning what saliva is so for you in order for you to understand or for me to make sense then i'll have to explain what are the components of saliva which are also called spit okay so basically saliva has the following components the ones that i've mentioned on the board but I still mention them one by one. So the one is electrolytes. So different sodium, uh, potassium, magnesium, different electrolytes are in saliva, even calcium. And these electrolytes can be dangerous if uh, they exceed certain levels. Like calcium can get into your tonsils and start forming those uh, stones, which are supposed to be removed by an ENT specialist. Okay? Because they'll start giving you a very bad breath. There are people who even after brushing their teeth, their mouth still produces this bad breath and they don't understand why so it's only uh, good that you visit or uh, take a walk into an ENT clinic so that you can be uh, examined those tonsils and if in those tonsil holes the accumulation of calcium and stones and even uh, food particles they can be removed and cleaned so that you get back your breath number two we have mucus now mucus its work is just to lubricate food um, and, and maintain the flow of uh, substances in your mouth and in your gut. Again, we have bicarbonates. Bicarbonates uh, play a very major role in your mouth. And this is to neutralize the acid. Now, where does this acid come from? Remember, in our first videos, I mentioned uh, substances that destroy your enamel and your teeth. Now, this comes from uh, fermentation of sugar. Once you consume carbohydrates and they get into the teeth crevices and your gums, then the fermentation process through uh, bacteria start to happen. Once it starts to happen, it produces acid. And this acid is very dangerous to your enamel. It starts to mess your enamel. And that destroys your, your teeth. So you start to have these cavities and dental decay and periodontal disease, which again gives you very bad uh, breath. Now we also have white blood cells, which help you in fighting infections and uh, hydrogen peroxide. So saliva has so many components. We even have protein. <coughs> which uh, is, a, is used, this protein is used to coat vitamin B12 so that it avoids the acidic environment in the stomach and evades it through its way to the small intestine where it is supposed to be absorbed. And vitamin B12 is a very important vitamin in our health. Okay. Then uh, huh, what else do we have? Uh, we have enzymes, enzymes like uh, amylase. These are enzymes that are used to break down carbohydrates and starches in your mouth before they even get to your gut and some of these carbohydrates are even started start getting absorbed in the mouth uh, and these enzymes play a major role in the breakdown 
of these starches. So basically those are the components that are found in your, uh, your, your saliva. I also mentioned antimicrobials. So antimicrobials and uh, WBCs play uh, the same, like similar roles in controlling bacteria in your mouth. Now remember antimicrobials are supposed to uh, lower the amount of the bad bacteria that you get from food and other substances that come through your mouth. So this is the function of this antimicrobial and the white blood cells that are present in your saliva. So basically those are the components of the saliva. Okay, so basically, simple as that. Now, from this you realize that there is a huge role uh, that saliva plays. And by altering the environment of the saliva or by altering the pH of the saliva, then you have all these problems. Remember, you produce up to 1,500 mLs or 1.5 liters of saliva every day. This is a very huge amount of saliva and its work is just to neutralize uh, these acids and to do all these functions that are done by these components that are in, in your saliva. So that's a huge amount and the pH of saliva is 6.5 possibly, 6.5 to 7.5. <clears throat> so this is slightly uh, basic towards neutral, okay? So yeah, so no, slightly acidic towards uh, neutral. So it plays a, a role around there. So this is the pH. Now, what else do, uh, uh, do we need to protect here? Apart from just protecting uh, this saliva because now it has to protect our gums, we also have to protect ourselves from diets that destroy our gums and our teeth. And that is specifically carbohydrates and sugars. These are the ones that mess the environment of the mouth and the pH of the saliva. So basically, if you want to have a healthy dental uh, formula or teeth, then you'll have to consider a reduction in your carbohydrate consumption, specifically simple sugars and the processed foods. Now, still talking about the processed foods, we have processed uh, uh, toothpastes, which I am not against, but I advise you not to use them. Now, commercial toothpastes have a lot of components that are very toxic to your health. I know most of us are addicted to this uh, Several, several brands and even mentioning them here or mentioning commercial toothpaste will get you irritated but I want you to understand that we want to uh, uh, we want to create an environment that we care about uh, your deeds and your health so possibly avoid uh, commercial toothpastes some of you will tell us or will say <coughs> that uh, these uh, homemade regimens are dirty in quotes or uh, in quotes or they they are unhygienic. Well, your hygiene can be maintained by your saliva. So these, uh, the ones that I'll suggest for you, as much as you want to consider them dirty, consider the long-term effects. Because now, it's, it's easier to act civilized uh, and get into all these conditions. Remember, civilization, civilization is the one that has brought us all these medical conditions, all these uh, diets, and this life, life, they, they call them lifestyle diseases. So, yes, some of the things that brought, uh, were brought by civilization are helpful, but we cannot consume everything with the hope that it's helping us. And one of them is commercial toothpaste. Now, <clears throat> I've uh, indicated different compounds. The ones that I've circled are the ones that are the, the, the ingredients that are in commercial toothpaste. We have fluoride, we have uh, triclosan, carrageena, artificial colorant and flavorants. All of them are synthetic. Then we have paraben. <coughs> We have paraben, then we have sodium lauryl sulfate, and lastly propylene glycol. Now these are the basic components in a commercial toothpaste. So be it any brand that you use, you will still find this as the major ingredients in commercial toothpastes. Now, I'll mention them one by one and uh, their effects in your body. And the one is fluoride. <clears throat> now the major reason why we are telling you to stay away from this commercial toothpaste because, is because they've been marketed using fluoride and they tell you that uh, this fluoride is the one that is supposed to clean your enamel and strengthen your teeth or your enamel. That is debatable, okay? But the effects that this fluoride brings are much more than cleaning just your teeth. Now this fluoride is a very harmful compound to the bacteria, the normal microbiome in your mouth. And you've already said that these bacteria are there to help you maintain the pH, fight diseases, and again, uh, prevent you from having that foul smell in your mouth. So if you start altering the composition of this bacteria, 
then you allow bad bacteria to flourish. And again, uh, this will bring you problems. Because now once they flourish, uh, like things like candida, you'll start having this oral thrush. Uh, things like, uh, yeah, the same yeast will uh, ferment carbohydrates and give you again uh, the acidic pH in the mouth, which is a problem. Now, number two, we've mentioned about triclosan. Now, triclosan, that one is a component that is uh, very dangerous because it was actually banned. But some of these toothpaste still have it. So you can, every time you walk into a supermarket and you pick a toothpaste, you should look at the ingredients and see if what I'm saying is true. So triclosan is uh, <coughs> an endocrine disruptor. So it disrupts your hormones. So why would you use something that disrupts your hormones and, and compromise that? Okay, compromise your hormone uh, 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 stability for the sake of just whitening your teeth. It doesn't make sense at all. Now this compound I already told it was burned, but some of these companies still use it. Then we have uh, Caragina. Caragina is highly uh, toxic and highly inflammatory. So Caragina, in conjunction with those uh, seed oils and wheat products, they're the ones that cause a leaky gut. They are highly inflammatory and they perforate your gut. So you might never notice this, but with time you will. Why? Because you use toothpaste every other day. So small components, small, little by little, small exposures will bring you a big problem in future. So it's easy to avoid to prevent future uh, conditions than to keep using it and accumulate small amounts of it that will perforate your gut. Good. Then artificial colorants and flavorants. These are supposed to uh, at least give you that feel good, the one that... Uh, some of you think is a mint and uh, the good color, those attractive colors that are used in toothpaste to attract you and attract those kids. Very dangerous because it's called emotional marketing. Colors are used, uh, colors, uh, they are used by these manufacturers to attract your attention, to attract your emotions. And since you get attracted, let's say like a red color, you can highly sell red color toothpaste in Masailan because they love red colors. So if you, you attract them using color, then they'll buy your compound, uh, your, your, your product more. So they use that. And that's why you see there are very attractive colors in those, tooth, in those toothpaste that you use and those that are advertised on television. So these artificial, uh, artificial colorants and uh, flavorants, uh, uh, we don't need them. They are highly toxic to your cells. Then you have paraben that is used as uh, preservative. Again, paraben and, uh, and, and, and triclosan play the similar roles, okay? They are all endocrine disruptors, so you can avoid them because you don't need to disrupt your hormones. That's a biological uh, occurrence for the sake of uh, just whitening or cleaning your mouth. Avoid them, totally. So we don't want these problems, hormonal problems all over just because we, we've been using toothpaste for a long period of time. Then we have a product that is called sodium lauryl sulfate. Now this is a product that is used in shampoos, the ones that you use to clean hairs, it's also used in detergents. And you can imagine what detergents do, because detergents are highly sterile, so they kill all the bacteria in your mouth and your saliva. And again, you know what that will cause uh, afterwards, <coughs> afterwards, sorry. Then propylene glycol. Propylene glycol uh, is, is a compound that is attached to another one, or can be converted to one that is called uh, dioxane. Now dioxane is highly carcinogenic. Again, some of these products have formaldehyde. That plays the same role as propylene glycol. They all have dioxin, dioxin, and dioxin is highly carcinogenic to your cells. So it will induce immune reactions, or rather uh, cellular reactions in your mitochondria, and this will cause you a lifetime cancer, which again, we can't uh, start mentioning the levels and how to manage it from this video. We already have another video talking about cancer and the foods that cause cancer. So you can have a look at that. Good. So basically those are the compounds that are found in, uh, in, in, in commercial toothpastes and how they affect your, your, your saliva and how they affect your system. So you will weigh and, and get to know if at all you can still stick on to your favorite brand of commercial toothpaste or you can shift to, to our natural remedies. And natural remedies, we, the ones that we will suggest for you, they don't have side effects. They don't have, uh, they don't have, they are inexpensive, they're not expensive. So you'll, you'll save, you'll cut costs on your, on your budgets. 
then they also they do have even an effect on, uh, on on saliva because they don't react they don't kill microorganisms they are natural and above all in the morning when you wake up there's a film that forms in your mouth that is bacterial exudates so when bacteria in your mouth are, uh, uh, eat and then excrete they produce that biofilm which uh, looks like a sticky substance in your mouth and that's uh, the one that produces a very foul smell so in the morning when you wake up after using uh, these natural regimens you will notice that this film is disappeared has disappeared and that's what we want okay good so what do you use now that you mentioned all these uh, side effects of commercial toothpastes so what do we use number one on the list is salt now salt is one of the underrated white crystals ever people have shifted from salt gone to sugar and that is and that is one thing that is messing us totally this sugar now salt is a good component you can use to brush your teeth you can either use salt water or just place salt on your toothbrush and then use it to brush your teeth believe me you're not as much as it is underrated tomorrow if you wake up you will not have that biofilm in your mouth you'll be feeling fresh still so salt is number one on the list number two is activated charcoal now you can use activate they are sold everywhere they are they are in in in, in pharmacies i'm not marketing activated charcoal but i'm telling you the truth Activated charcoal can uh, be used to whiten your teeth and it has no side effects and it has no reaction to your saliva. Good. Number three on the list is bicarbonate soda. We all know this. Uh, it's a very good compound for your teeth. And then we have non-fluoridated toothpastes. Now, remember, fluoride is the major compound here. It has the major problems here. But the, uh, all, uh, all these others, they accumulate in small quantities. So basically, if... <coughs> If uh, I was to advise on someone to use these natural regimens or a non-fluoridated toothpaste, then I'll throw out non-fluoridated toothpaste for a reason. It is synthetic. And number two, even if it doesn't have fluoride, it might contain the other compounds, which will still be toxic. So yes, some of you will opt to buy non-fluoridated toothpaste. It's a good one. If you want to use it, you can use it. But... Uh, you have to consider the first three before you even go to non fluoridated toothpaste. So basically, these are the reasons why you should not, you should avoid uh, uh, commercial toothpastes. And these are the reasons why you should now start using uh, natural regimens. So basically, those are homemade uh, regimens for, uh, for toothpaste. And basically, the reasons why you should avoid fluoridated and commercial toothpaste. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next.